I felt goosebumps, so I don't, I don't know. I, I hope you feel the passion, not just from from the, the audio team, but from everyone that poured a lot of work into this. I hope music gives justice to, to the thousands of men hours that were put in this, this place. Oh, sounds good. I'll, I'll let you know. I haven't even thought about that, actually. I haven't thought about that, bro. But uh, I'll let you know once I'm, I'm looking, just bro. Thanks for the offer, bro. So much better than we... I haven't even thought about that. ...ever hoped it would be when we started working on Crusader Harvey. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is not good quality. Why? There you go. All right. Very, very different than what you'd see. It's, you know, this huge vistas to look at, uh, these beautiful sunsets to look at, but also almost too perfect a world. And it's, this is so beautiful, man. Man, this is so beautiful. I guess the biggest reaction that we're trying to create is this insane sense of scale. And we really want to capture that sense of, of Orison just sprawling out into the distance. I've seen our backers get excited about all kinds of tiny little details that you'd think, ah, that doesn't really matter. But that is beautiful. The first time I saw it for myself, it was beautiful. Oh, this is this is really cool. Like, I really like this. Um, they did mention, yeah, it is a, a manufacturing. There is a manufacturing facility for ships. They are a ship manufacturer after all. And it's really cool that they actually have uh, one of the vessels the C2, it looks like, that is is still being worked on. That is so cool to see that, man. I'll be honest, it'll only get better from here. The things that give an environment character beyond just the architecture and the shape of it is... What is that? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What is this? I didn't notice this, but I think these things move. These are ships. These are ships. Look at this. It's the same ship, right? So are these like transport vehicles? You know, like I know the the, the one the, the transport vehicle that we use to traverse is a smaller scout ship that they have. But what are these? Interesting beyond just the architecture and the shape just of it float. is things that are super important, like the, the dressing, the props that are placed around the foliage. A lot of it is about adding that human element in, because if you have no dressing, you've just got architecture, it feels very sterile and doesn't feel very real. So one way we, um, we try to add that character into a location is through what we call a graphic standards, which includes fonts and iconography and just style of lines and things. and those can be cool, different man. between whole landing zones, but they could also be different within landing zones. Man, I would, I would love, you know what I would love? I would love to buy something like this when they have base building in. I would love to buy something like this and just have it outside of my base. As soon as I step out, I already know what the weather is like on the planet. That would be really cool, man. I really like this. this I think this is really cool. <laughs> oh my goodness. Depending on it, it might be more industrial looking, it might be more habitational looking and or medical, for example. There's different ways you can do that. One of the things that we talked about was tourism is, is a big part of your industry. You want to paint the pretty picture. You want to have the postcard shot. You consume through nice. your your eyes as you see what people are dressed like. What are the you know, what are the vendors wearing? What are they selling? What are they talking, you know, the people that come up to you, what's the average person look like? Like that tells so much about an area. In this case, we kind of focused in on sort of this uh, 1950s this so beautiful, Americana, man. like the white picket fence, the perfect family unit, you know, the Norman Rockwell sort of painting. Like, what is that sci-fi version of that? Even the guys wearing suits, it's like that traditional, well-dressed businessman of that era. And that's kind of was our jumping off point. It's got a much different feel than a lot of the zones because of that. It does. The way they're dressing, I don't know. I, I, 
I don't know how I feel about the the legacy type of attire that they're going for, but it's pretty cool. It's unique. I like the fact that they are going for a unique feel at every major location you go to, and they're. I feel like this is even going to be the gold standard in terms of um, bringing forth a different experience depending on where you're at, right? So um, it seems like there's a whole di whole different kind of culture over here. If you go to Lorville, it's a whole different kind of culture over there. Art Corp, it's a whole different kind of culture over there. And I feel like the way they're doing Orison, it seems like it's going to be more so of a gold standard in terms of how they deliver that experience. And uh, that's what it looks like, man. They really did a good job with this. I'm quite impressed with it. Even though we did see a lot of... Uh, um, they did show a little snippets of it here and there throughout the year. It's still impressive to still see it. I can't wait to get my hands on it, though. Performance is one of the biggest challenges, especially for lighting. Wow, look at that. That is gorgeous, man. For lighting, we wanted to achieve a, a nice contrast between, you know, kind of a, a friendly, welcoming mood for the commercial and tourism areas. And then at the same time, not an unwelcoming that, mood, man. but more of a, a functional Bro, kind of... Not an un this, like, who would want to go to this place for a vacation? <laughs> what is this, a tourist commercial? What is this? <laughs> this looks good, man. Like, this looks like a place you would want to travel to just to stay for a week. Man. This is super cool, man. They really did a good job with this. Welcoming mood, but more of a, a functional kind of high-tech workspace for the other industrial platforms. And then at the same time, we also want to add on, further contrast so that at daytime, it's very clean, it's very bright. And then at nighttime, you get a little bit more varied color palette. And because we want to have all of this light at nighttime, uh, we have to take into account the level of detail that we expect while also leaving enough oh. room in the lighting budget for all of these lights, like one platform further away from you, two platforms, three, and, e and even further than that. So lighting is, is a big challenge. That is so beautiful. I love, I love these little fireflies that are flying around. It just gives off. It's a really good experience, man. I love it. I would like this is this is a location that's gonna, probably going to be my main location. Like forget Alisar, forget Hurston, forget Arcorp. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be on Urson. All right. I'm just letting you guys know. Crusader is going to be my star system. It's going to be my planet tour. My, uh, the, the planet that I'm going to be mostly around, man. Send me a friend request. All right, good. I'm going to check it out. Favorite this. bits with the butterflies and the fireflies that come out at night in the, the garden. They are absolutely stunning. It's one of those things you don't necessarily notice so cool. the little details consciously, but it just breathes so much life into an otherwise empty space. Hold on. I think I did notice a star lifter. Just breathes. So I wonder if this it's is like a thing commercial you don't necessarily notice the little player. details consciously, but this right here. What is that? A star lifter? But it just it looks breathes like so lifter. much life into an otherwise empty space. In the case of the, the platform thrusters, you've got to communicate why this platform is floating. You've got this map. That is so cool. So how how is this working in lore? Right? How is this working? So you built platforms that are constantly that have thrusters are constantly firing to keep it up so where are they getting the fuel for this is it from the gas itself on the gas uh, on crusader that they're constantly recycling to use to i'm assuming on crusader it's very low gravity on crusader first and foremost secondly so because it's very low gravity, they're able to get away with this. And thirdly, they're able to get the fuel from the gas giant itself. Right? So that, but it's really cool though. It's really cool. I like it. Um, it does make sense to have a, at least doing this, like firing its engines every now and then in order to keep it floating.
massive platform, it's got to have some way of staying in the air. So the idea is that these thrusters are there to keep this platform in in situ, otherwise you're just going to fall out of the sky and fall into the gas giant. So first for us, being a bit technically challenging, but I think it's going to be worth it. Oh, in a box, no problem. <laughs> no worries, man. The initial goal and reference point for generating clouds, like realistic looking clouds that are convincing for the player, or like for everybody, obviously, um, is always going to be Earth. But Art Direction wanted something less Earth-like and a bit you know, more. You know, you know what I'm curious? On initial release, are these clouds going to be moving? That's what I'm curious about. I hope they're they're gonna make it move. I think that would be really cool, and it will make it'll make the environment dynamic on its on on initial release because um, I kind of want a scenario where, let's say, you're on Orison kind of want the clouds to move that way the clouds kind of um intertwine with the stanton star that way it makes it gives you different um experiences all throughout the day right it gives you a different look or feel based on where the star is and based on how much clouds is above the station um you kind of know what i mean like like this like what, what we're looking at right now i kind of want it to look like this and eventually the clouds will move out of the way and then it's a different look you know what i mean now that's kind of that's kind of what i'm hoping it will be like alien if you will and that was one of the bigger challenges i definitely right, know chief, thank you I will, i'll be some, there sorry uh, visual artifacts that you can see sometimes in high contrast areas or in the distance and stuff but i know that, oh, that. if it's not fixed that by 314 that carson and the team will uh, definitely be able to work on those and improve those uh in in the future okay cool i think it's great that, that the cloud tech is going out as it is because it does look amazing everything that's gonna have clouds so will really use this technology just from what is there already it's so promising that we have no doubt it's gonna be amazing once it's fully realized and deployed in the whole universe For the planet, we wanted to feel the more uh, grandeur Edgy. element of Crusader. It's a fantastic planet. I think the music is the first thing that makes you understand the culture and the, um, the tone of the place. The guidance I man, got from Darren shit, when you bro. land I I is it, that man. you that is wanted so cool. to feel as if you were looking at uh, an eternal sunset or something like that. I mean, kind of like a, makes you go into the most human part of you. Wow. And for the industrial part, we wanted to, to make sure we felt the grandeur of the industrial mind of engineers that uh, work there and uh, and construct all the beautiful ships that we have in the star system. So cool. I certainly really way much more deeper than usual, uh, even more deeper. I mean, I, I tried to go deeper and deeper in oh, everything. So, I did, so hope you guys enjoy it. So pretty. Our next landing zone, Horizon, and the gas giant crusader that sits beneath it represent the next major milestone for our planet tech content, environment, engine, graphics, VFX teams, and more. And like each planet and moon before it, will continue to iterate and improve as subsequent technologies come online and further development progresses. And while it's a, it's a major component of the upcoming Alpha 314, there's more where that came from. Now, before we let you go for the quarter, let's take a moment to recap everything coming our way in the patch report. As we just saw, the fabled Orison, city amongst the clouds and dream of star so citizens pretty. everywhere, makes its long-awaited debut riding high on the gas giant Crusader in Alpha 314. Now like Microtech and Lorville before it, it will continue to expand in subsequent patches with the addition of hospitals, the Crusader showroom, oh, whale that watching... Is so cool. So this is the showroom, so I'm guessing... 
there will be access points to the ship for you to see it or no this is i think it's just a manufacturing they're just they're still building on they're still working on this this is really cool i like this this is super cool and i i'm guessing there's probably gonna be a lot more other there's gonna be a, other ones right i would assume is this is not just the only one working on um a c2 or an m2 or an a2 you know what i mean i think that would be cool i think it'd also be cool if they sneak in an a2 just just the the, the exterior of it as one of these so you can just come here and just check it out but you won't be able to go inside of it of course that would be really cool if they did something like that but uh i'm, I'm very impressed man Seder showroom whale watching tours and more Additionally, this first version of Crusader boasts another new feature for Alpha 314, our initial implementation of planetary volumetric clouds, which builds off previous work from wow, our stellar gas that. clouds and begins the process of expanding oh, man, that I can't wait until I can across fly the entire through this. surface of a planet or a moon. Look at that. Now, while still in active development and not yet final, the work continues beyond Alpha 314 with SDF occlusion to help alleviate graphical artifacting, the addition of local VFX work, and a refinement to overall process that will improve an already amazing quality seen here in subsequent patches. On the gameplay front, there are several advancements to ship and vehicle operation coming in Alpha 314 that aim to further improve the combat and flight experience, including Power Management V2, formerly referred to here as capacitors, designed to rebalance all the connected systems that make ships go. From thrusters to weapons to shields, adding you know, another layer. I'm kind of excited for the for, for the capacitor gameplay, right? But what I'm kind of um what I'm kind of nervous about is where are they gonna put the new keybinds for adjusting your capacitors, right? If you're using mouse and keyboard and you're using your WASD right and my right hand is managing my controls of the ship right is there going to be an easy way to adjust because if you're in combat I don't want to take my hands off of my WASD right because I kind of I think I heard that they're going to make it I think like F5 F6 F7 and F8 to reset or something like that and I feel like I can't adjust. I can't make the necessary adjustments in a time on, in a timely fashion, right? If I'm in the middle of combat, I don't want to take my hands off of the mouse, and I don't want to take my hands off of the WASD, right? I want to be able to have an easy reach to wherever I need to go to. And I feel like if it's if it's F5, F6, F7, it's gonna be a little bit hard to multitask. You know what I mean, like. That's kind of what I'm curious about. But when I, from my experience, Elite Dangerous has a similar concept, but um, adjusting the the capacitor is more so the arrow keys right here. So I don't know. We're gonna have to see. I hope, hopefully, they come up with something um, simple, you know, and straight to the point. But we'll see. We'll see layer of critical decision making to combat is just one more way to put the successful outcome of any battle more squarely in players hands. There's also missile operator mode and the rework to missile guidance and control, which not only brings about a new way to interact with and control the variety of munitions available on ships and vehicles, but improves the way they handle themselves in the verse by bringing the same intelligent flight control system pilots use for spacecraft to their missiles and torpedoes. This has the effect of improving both performance and tracking ability while providing skilled pilots a way to use their talents in avoiding death and destruction. Oh, that's so cool. I a like, revitalization I like the of the way radar, scanning, and ping work throughout the Star oh, Citizen cool. universe. That is cool. You can kind of see that it's scanning even through the ship. So this is how it's even going to detect the, uh, the components. It, it literally sees right through the ship. That's super cool like that i didn't when they initially showed this in one of the uh earlier isc they didn't show this i think this is just this is new um because yeah it's if the, the scanner seems like it's just, just scanning right through the ship and seeing everything on the ship that's super cool man you don't like the new uh missile aspect of the game for solo pilots 
yeah but we'll see let's let's see how it is um i think it might they might make it easy for the solo pilots but we'll, we'll have to see um when i get my hands on it i have to test it out and see is another essential addition to the upcoming really alpha 314 scanners. with it's detailed really cool. and consistent means of discovery oh, so distraction cool. and potentially destruction so now, this new better. unified oh, system with its upcoming fps counterpart will form the foundation of a new and improved level of investigation cat and mouse Ooh, nice. chase and more for the future while changing the way players interact with content already in the game today it is so it, it is so smooth and pretty now like i hate the old scanner i can't wait to get my hands on this but it's so much more pretty it's it's so much better um let's see what else if there's anything here that uh, mineable commodity total value, total value type face tonight Okay, so type, and then it tells you the details about that. Volatile cargo, zero. Okay, interesting. interesting. Okay. So I'm assuming this is just a basic scanner, but I think when you go into your mining mode, it's probably going to give you a different UI, similar to what the prospectors have. I think this is just a general scanner for any ship, and it will give you these uh, this general details about whatever object you're scanning. Interesting. Today. And of course, all of these new systems are displayed better than ever before with the new Canvas Slice HUD, a tech made possible by our continuing development of building blocks that aims to provide an improved layout that maximizes screen real estate while providing more opportunities for increased information and the groundwork for allowing manufacturer-specific visual designs like the Aegis one we've seen before and the Drake version currently being developed now. This but really when you're good. flying like through that. the verse, there's been a ship waiting patiently for its time to shine. That last variant of our original five pledge ships finally makes its debut in the upcoming and Alpha the 314, looks the cool. Constellation Taurus. Now, it may not look like much, kid, but it's got it where it counts. And that's the cargo hold. Just be careful where you take it, because Alpha 314 also brings with it the danger, the conflict, and the opportunities inherent in two dynamic events scheduled to occur during the next quarter. I'm liking it, I'm liking it actually. First, the I thought return I would like the it, newly but it's really cool. And remastered Xeno threat that will bring all players across all servers to bear in battling the tormented invaders from the pyro system, as well as the smaller, more local threat of the Nine Tails in a new PvP focused event that will occur several times in different locations throughout the Stanton system. Of course, if you yeah, this is one of the things I'm really excited for. Um, getting Xeno Threat back and the Nine Tail looks very, very interesting. I'm actually excited for it. I can't wait until the the PTU hits Wave One so that we can get our hands on it and test it and see how it actually works. But it looks really fun. It's an opportunity for for the whole community to get together and participate in one uh, general event. I think it's really cool, man. I think it's one of the most. I think that's the, the funnest time really especially the xeno threat that happened a few months ago it was super fun man. if you get caught up where you shouldn't be there's also the new surrender system that will allow criminals who can't get away to be arrested without losing either their life or their ship if you're into that kind of thing is that so it what did we learn all right so in regards to the surrender thing i think some people were concerned like what's the point of surrendering if you're still going to go to jail right um i think number one you might i think you, you're gonna get a um a shorter sentence and number two in the future in the very near future they're gonna start especially when physical inventory comes in full persistence comes in i think we're gonna start seeing the whole death of a spaceman mechanic um incrementally be, be uh be in, um implemented incrementally and so dying is going to mean something um in the very near future um I, I think a few a few weeks a week or two ago i did um the medical gameplay um leak video and it kind of uh, expounds on that because there's going to be doctors there's going to be like um paramedics there's gonna be medics and there's also going to be doctors that and um if you get hurt there's going to you can 
somebody can perform surgery on you somebody can you know medics can keep you alive for a limited amount of time but you need to go to a natural hospital where um, an actual doctor will have to perform surgery on you and they're doing all this to make sure that people value your death right death is going to be important because you will lose things when you die and i think this is why we're getting this in now because i think when the medical gameplay comes in it's going to make a lot of sense as to why they're putting this in right now so yeah so um i think that is it right so what did we learn yeah so that's it man i think um it's a nice it's a nice inside sources and episode